on the onto the consent calendar. All matters listed under our consent calendar are considered to be routine and can be enacted in one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items prior to the time that the council votes on the motion unless members of the city council, staff, or public request specific items to be discussed or removed from the consent calendar for individual action. I do have a speaker card here on item number nine. So I'm assuming that we would like to pull that from the consent calendar. Are there any other items that need to be pulled from the consent calendar at this time? Online? No public comment. Okay. With the exception of item number nine, which we have uh, a speaker card for, uh, action from the council. Move to the mayor. Oh. Sorry. Through the mayor, I move that we approve item six, well, excuse me, five, six, seven, and eight. Second. Okay. I have a motion um, to on items five, six, seven, and eight. Do I have a second? Yep. Second. All right. All those in favor of items five, six, seven, and eight being approved, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Hearing none, five, six, seven, and eight are approved. Item number nine, and Ms. Espen, please. Miss, you're being very generous, thank you. Good evening, Council. For the record, my name is Heather Esseman, 2020 Lincoln Road, Yuba City, so I'm a Yuba City resident. Uh, first of all, this isn't number nine, but thank you very much for wearing pink since it's October. Yeah, I'm course. assuming that's what it's for. I will, uh, I will say that you might not be able to tell from there, but Mr. Shaw did the same thing. He's got pink polka dots. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's hard to see from We here. won't talk about his underwear, but... <laughs> that's not my three minutes, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm wearing a pink jacket. Yes, that's so, true. Uh, there you go. Uh, it's pretty pinkish. I think we all have some pink in us somewhere. That's yeah. good. Okay, so um, I uh, uh, wanted to... Uh, comment on what happened, I think it was two weeks ago when, we, when there was a discussion, and I beg to differ with Vice Mayor Shaw. Uh, I was actually at the Planning Commission meeting, and I spoke to at least one of the commissioners after the meeting specifically about this topic. Um, I'm afraid that, that the understanding that I got uh, in the room, as well as um, from both sides, there were two gentlemen on either side, that uh, we're basically trying to point to the fact that the planning commission in that function is there because of a check and balance system that needs to be adhered to whenever possible. So you're all reasonable people. I'm sure you're, you, you feel that you're very ethical and, and would represent the city, and I do think that you've done a very good job, although I can't say too much about Councilman Kirshner, because he doesn't speak too much during the meeting, so we appreciate a little bit more of that. But um, the, that isn't always the case. That won't always be the case. And I think that's the reason why uh, Councilwoman Espinolda said, we need a sunset clause on this. Uh, if, you're, if you're not sure how a sea council could end up in disarray, please look at Live Oak. Uh, it's a disaster there. People were elected and they can't get along. You can't assume that everybody's going to be elect that's going to be elected will be as ethically minded as you are right now. And by passing something like this, the problem you're going to have is there could be somebody at some point wanting to do some development, thinking that, uh, and I read one of this in there, that the likelihood of an appeal to the CC if another review process is used was listed in the, in the, uh, the actual um, language. Basically, they just have to say, well, I don't think the Planning Commission is going to prove this and come to one of you and ask you, can you please pull this? You've got seven days. They know they have seven days because they're paying attention to this. And then that person pulls it and comes here and says, this is very important. We need to make sure that this gets through. There needs to be a check and balance on everything, and there's a reason why that was set up in the past. So, and I applaud uh, Councilwoman Espinola for voting no on this. I understand what they were saying, and I still have not understood why you, as a council, are doing this. I didn't get that in the last few meetings. They didn't understand it either. Uh, I think that's why um, somebody had mentioned something about 
power plays or things like that, and that's where he got that information, but that wasn't, there's a check and balance system that is set up in place, and it shouldn't be changed. Just wanted to tell you that. You can do whatever you want, obviously, but. If you don't mind, I, I, I'll address and then I'll um, uh, pass it off to the vice mayor. Number one, <clears throat> I think there probably could have been better communication between us and the planning commission in regards to why uh, this council considered that option. Uh, it has to do with our priority of being business friendly. Uh, there are some procedures that are in place that somehow sometimes get in the way of allowing a business to get into operation in Yuba City. And frankly, um, in this case, and no disrespect to Councilwoman Espindola, I know she knows that I respect her, the majority of the council felt that that it was very important for us to be able to clear a path for businesses that want to come in, even if they're controversial. Um, it takes three of us to execute on that um, particular item to bring it forward. So it's not just that any one of us, myself, the Vice Mayor, Councilwoman Espindola, Councilman Harris, Councilman Kirchner can make that happen. It takes three of us, which is a majority. Do I think it's gonna be executed on frequently? No, I do not. Um, but there are occasions where, and we've had occasions here in the past, where it probably would have come to us anyway so why, why stall it off? That's just my personal opinion, and, and as a member of the council, why I voted in favor. But I would uh, obviously give Councilman Sh or Vice Mayor Shaw an opportunity to respond, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, totally agree. It, the reason we brought it forward is because of past practices and things that were very disturbing with prior planning commissions when this was originally brought up was the um, uh, the implication that they had more authority than what they actually do because everything the Planning Commission approves, they actually make a recommendation and we approve it. And so there was a misunderstanding of what the roles were. And then when you get controversial projects coming forward, and we almost had one this past year and it ended up not coming up to the council, business friendly, why go through the mechanism of making the developer have the extra time to, it's gonna be here, heard here anyway, and the process stays the same. There's no steps that are bypassed in the planning department, any of the reports, any of the hearings. If it's going to end up here anyway, and three of us feel that it's going to be here, then why not just go ahead and go right to where it's going to end up? And to your latter point, I agree with what you said as far as we're ethical, but what happens when we're no longer here? After the meeting, Councilwoman Espindola and I had a discussion, and we need this to stay in place, but my exact words to her, and she agreed, was let's keep it in place, but let's work on maybe setting up something to maybe you know do a review process. Anything that we have, we should be constantly reviewing it periodically, and we do that. So, you know, that would be something this council could take up to maybe this is a policy we review every five years or so, but not just sunset it so you have it today and it's gone tomorrow, and then you have to go back through the steps of re-putting it in, but every policy should be reviewed, and I'm not against that. We work very well together, but I don't know what's going to happen when we're all not here. So there does need to be the checks and balances. The use of it will be very minimal, but there's more to the story than just we're trying to follow procedures and checks and balances. There are checks and balances, and even with the express lane, as I call it, there's still plenty of checks and balances right there as well because it goes through the same process because your legislative body is these five. Everything that comes from the Planning Commission is a recommendation. So. Through the mayor. Um, Thank you for bringing up your comments. I really appreciate every um, opportunity that you go up there. I, I always learn something from you, so thank you for doing that. Um, you know, when we originally, at least, and I'm just doing it in my recall and memory here, um, when we originally um, developed this process of this um, policy, there there were many concerns. So um, there were, you know, there there was tremendous amount of changes when we first came on as a council, and so understanding, um, as Vice Mayor Shaw says, this express lane to help, you know, um, stimulate development and bring in businesses, et cetera. Um, I was very supportive of it. And then we had a sunset clause, so I understood that there was an ending time set to this particular process. And there was, there was um, 
development occurring and changes occurring in the planning commission as well. So there was a lot of growth going on in the city at that time. And um, so my, my main concerns are expressed by what you said, you know, to why I, I don't support this and I'm not gonna, uh, you know, consent to the consent calendar item on this one, but because of that concern of, of not knowing five years, 10 years, when is this gonna be a, one of those policies that you take off from the shelf or whatever the file folder or somewhere in the cloud and bring it forward to remember to update it or change it. And um, as much as I like to think everyone is always on the ethical and with integrity, unfortunately there are people that sometimes don't function that way, don't practice that way, don't work that way. And so, um, it brings concern to me in certain, in many more um, areas than just the sunset clause and the checks and balances. There's a, a other areas at this point. So I, I think we, we as a council and as our city staff, um, and with the commissioners, the planning commissioners, we have a very um, well organized, defined roles, expectations. All those things are there in play. Um, it's taken us over two and a half years, even through everything else that we've all experienced. Um, but this could easily go awry um, when things, other factors take into place. So that's my concerns as well. And yeah, review it five years. I don't know if I'll be here in five years. I don't know if you'll be here in five years. I mean, it's not about a reelection. It's also about if you're alive or not alive in five years. So there's multiple other um, things in life that we don't always control. So I, I just like to add that. Any other comment from the council? Thank you. Okay. Back. Any other public comment on item nine? Anybody online? No public comment. Okay. Back to the uh, council for possible action on item number nine. Through the mayor. Uh, move to approve. Second. Have a motion by the vice mayor, second by councilperson Harris on item number nine. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. We have uh, four to one pass of item number nine.